Hello friends. In the last video we learned how to calculate tension in a massless rope. Now in this video we will learn how to find tension in a rope that has a mass. And let us illustrate all this using a problem. So this problem says a gymnast with mass 50 kg suspend herself from the lower end of a hanging rope. So this is a hanging rope and this gymnast hangs herself from the lower end of this hanging rope. And the mass of gymnast is given that is 50 kg. So let us write it here mg is equals to 50 kg. Next it says the upper end of the rope is attached to the gymnasium ceiling. So this is the upper end of this rope and this is attached to the ceiling. So this is the gymnasium ceiling. We have to find the tension at the top and bottom end of the rope if the weight of the rope is 120 Newton. So the weight of rope is also given the weight of rope is equals to 120 Newton. And what is the target variable? We have to find tension and top and bottom end. So let's call this point is point 1 that is bottom of the rope and this is point 2 that is top of the rope. So we have to find tension at point 1 that is T1 and we have to find tension at point 2 that is T2. So this is what we have to find. Now how will you solve this problem? So to solve such problem you have to first draw the free body diagram and in that case you have to decide what are your component, what are the system component for which you are going to draw the free body diagram. In this case we can draw a free body diagram for gymnast and we can draw a free body diagram for rope and we can also draw a free body diagram for ceiling but that will not be useful in this case because uh, that, that will not give any extra equation. So let us draw free body diagram for gymnast and rope and let's see try to find variable T1 and T2 since we have two variable unknown that is T1 and T2 if we can take two free body diagram and we can write two independent equation we can solve this problem. So if I draw free body diagram of gymnast, so let us denote gymnast by a point. One force is acting in the downward direction is the weight of gymnast that is WZ. Now what are other forces that is acting? Another force that is acting on this gymnast is a force that is trying to pull this up and this force is applied by the rope. So rope is trying to lift this gymnast or you can say hold this gymnast in the upward direction. And this force, let's call this force is T1. So we can show this force in the free body diagram and this force is T1. So this is free body diagram of gymnast and G denotes gymnast. Now similarly, I can write free body diagram for rope. This is free body diagram of rope. Now again we can denote this rope by a point. So this denotes rope and what are the forces that is acting on the rope? One force, this gymnast is trying to pull this rope in the downward direction. Try to see here. This gymnast is trying to pull this rope in the downward direction and rope is trying to pull this, this gymnast in the upward direction. These two are action-reaction pair. Now if I apply Newton's third law, these action-reaction pair has to be equal. And this means this force is also equals to T1. What are the other forces that is acting? Now this rope has mass. So this is not a massless rope. So weight of rope will also act. And this will act again in the downward direction. And let's call this weight is WZ that or WR that is weight of rope. Any other force that is acting? Yes, one more force is acting in this case. 
this rope is trying to pull the ceiling in the downward direction in other words this ceiling is also trying to pull this rope in the upward direction and the magnitude at this point is t2 that is the amount or force by which this ceiling is trying to pull this rope in the upward direction is t2 so now i can show this force here that is t2 is in the upward direction now once I have this free body diagram, I can solve for unknown. So let us consider the equilibrium of gymnast and rope. Both are in equilibrium, so sum of the forces has to be zero. So first we will consider for gymnast and let us make sign convention that is positive direction is the upward direction. So let us first consider equilibrium equilibrium of gymnast so if i consider equilibrium of gymnast sum of all the forces has to be zero in the upward direction force is acting t1 in the downward direction force is acting wz and that's why we have put a negative sign this is in the downward direction sum of all the forces is equals to zero so this means t1 is equals to weight of gymnast and bed of gymnast we have already calculated this is nothing but 490 newton so tension at the bottom of this rope is equals to 490 newton so this is at the bottom at bottom at bottom of rope now the next part we can consider equilibrium so this is equilibrium of rope that is r so if you consider equilibrium of rope the vertical forces is t2 and what are the forces that is acting in the downward direction minus t1 minus wr now since this is in equilibrium sum of all the forces is equals to zero so from here i can write t2 is equals to t1 plus wr and we have already calculated this t1 is nothing but 490 newton so we can plug here so this is 490 newton and weight of rope is given that is 120 newton so if i sum all this this will come 610 newton so this is now i can say tension at the bottom of rope is 610 newton so this is sorry this is at the top of the rope so at top of rope so you see in this case the tension at top and bottom is not same so if you see this rope so this is the rope at bottom you have a tension of 490 newton and at top you have a tension of 610 newton so this is top point and this is bottom point so this tension is not same if you remember in case of massless rod these two tension are same that is t2 is equals to t1 but in this case t1 and t2 is not equal the upward point that is top point has more tension and the bottom point has less tension and the difference is nothing but this difference is same as the weight of this rope so you see in a massless rope and a rope with mass you will not have the same treatment in case of mass rope, mass rope or in case of a rope that has a mass you have different tension you can basically calculate tension at this point at this point at this point at this point so if we give you the distance from top point x then you can basically calculate tension as a function of x that is not part of this session sometime else we will discuss that the idea is in case of a rod or in case of a rope that has a mass tension will not be same it will vary with the length finally you can also solve this problem by taking a different kind of system or you can say composite system what i mean let us try to understand so this is the ceiling and this is the rope and this is the gymnast 
Now, in this case, I can consider this as my system. So, if I consider this as a system, what are the forces that is acting? So, let's say this is my composite system and that is denoted by this point. So, what are the forces that is acting in the downward direction? One is bait of gymnast. So, gymnast bait will come and then another is bait of rope. And what is the force that is at this point, this is point number 2, there is a force that is acting in the upward direction that is T2, tension at point 2. Now if I consider equilibrium of this composite system, I can write T2 minus WR minus WZ is equals to 0. So this means T2 is equals to WR plus WZ. And this is equals to 610 kilonewton as I calculated earlier also. Now see, if I consider this composite system, I cannot calculate T1 because I have only one free body diagram. So we cannot calculate T1. So if I consider a composite system, it's not possible to calculate T1. Basically, in this case, what is happening? T1 is becoming an internal force. So this part and this part. So the force T1 is becoming internal force and that's why this force does not come into the free body diagram. So if you have more forces or you want to analyze T1, then you have to break this system. You have to consider rope separately and you have to consider this uh, gymnast separately. So this means if you, if you want detailed analysis or if you want to solve more unknowns, you have to consider more number of components. You have to draw free body diagram of more number of system uh, components of a system. So it is always a good idea to break the system in multiple components and draw the free body diagram of each component and write down the equation and solve this equation. I hope you have liked this video and if you like this video, please share, subscribe and discuss with your friends. Hope I will see you in the next video. Thank you.